Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let me cry, come to you. Do not turn your face from me. In the day when I am afflicted, incline your ear to me. In the day when I call upon you, hear me quickly. For my days vanished like smoke, and my bones burned up like firewood. I was cut down like grass, and my heart came withered. I forgot to eat my bread because of the sound of my groaning. My bones cleave to my flesh. I have become like a pelican in a desert. I have become like an owl in a ruined house. I kept watch and have become like a sparrow alone on a housetop. My enemies reproached me all day long. And those who praised me swore against me. For I ate ashes like bread and mixed my drink with weeping because of the wrath of your countenance and your anger. For you lifted me up and broke me down. My days were far spent like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. But you, O oh Lord, remain forever, and your remembrance is from generation to generation. When you rise up, you shall have compassion on Zion. For it is time to have compassion on her, because the time has come. For your servants took pleasure in her stones, and they shall have compassion for her dust. And the Gentiles shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord shall build Zion, and he shall be seen in his glory. He regarded the prayer of the humble, and he did not despise their supplication. Let this be written for another generation, and the people who are created shall praise the Lord, for he looked down from the height of his holy place. The Lord looked down upon the earth from heaven to hear the groaning of those bound, to set free the sons of the slain, to declare the Lord's name in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples and the kingdoms are gathered together to serve the Lord, he replied to him in the way of strength. Declare to me the fewness of my days. Take me not away in the midst of my days. Your years are throughout all generations. In the beginning, O Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall remain. And all things shall grow old like a garment, and like a cloak you shall change them, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. The children of your servants shall dwell there, and their seed shall be led to prosperity forever. Well, howdy out there. Welcome back to Burning Bushes. I'm Daniel J. Newman, Orthodox Catechumen, and today we're reviewing ice cream and beer during Lent. How could I do such a thing? Have I forgotten everything on how to be a good person? What have I done? No, no. Look, that, that sounded off because this doesn't make me a good person, but it's actually not dairy ice cream. I, I'm going to try out. Earth-grown vegan mocha judge non-dairy frozen dessert made with almond milk. This is a plant-based ice cream. This is made from plants instead of from cows. So I guess it's Lent fr fr friendly. And I also got a beer. Uh, but this beer is non-alcoholic because I don't drink alcohol anymore. But I do like the taste of beer still. Um, I just don't really spend the money on it much anymore. But today I decided to. Uh, it's, you know, 
I feel like life is short and sometimes reviewing this stuff can be good for people too. And it'll be good for me because I never tried almond milk ice cream before and I really would like to try this new athletic brewing company Upside Dawn, Dawn, not Down, Golden Ale. We're going to try that in a bit. But first, the ice cream. So on the ingredients here, we got almond milk, cane sugar, organic tapioca syrup, chocolate fudge, organic coconut oil, coffee extract made with 100% Colombian coffee, pea protein, <laughs> carabine gum, gallon gum, sunflower lechon. So it's got almond and coconut in it. And uh, when you open it up, this is what it looks like. It's kind of been out of the freezer for just a bit, so it's kind of gotten a little bit, you know, warm, warmer. Um, don't know what to think of a plant-based ice cream, but let's try it. It's not bad. It definitely has a lighter texture to it than dairy, which I guess I should expect. So it's like almost airy. Because it doesn't have dairy, it's more airy. It doesn't have that D. The chocolate's really good here too. You really can taste the coffee. It's probably the best part. It's just a really high quality coffee that's in here. And they just did a good job with the chocolate. Like, I don't know, this is actually decent. So it's um, three servings per container, which makes sense. 210 calories per serving. But if you ate the whole thing, it would be 630 calories, which really wouldn't be that terrible in the grand scheme of things. But I wouldn't be able to eat this whole thing. But it's good. It's good, and I think it would actually make a pretty decent milkshake. Like if I put this in a Nutribullet with some banana... I think that could be actually pretty excellent. Wow. And glory to God. I didn't know such things were even possible. Now, some may ask, does this go against the spirit of fasting? Um... I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not a priest. I'm a catechumen. Um, I know that <laughs> on a technical level that this does not go against Lent. Um, I also know that it's not within the faith to um, not enjoy things. But you shouldn't be like worshipping um, your passions. So if you're like, man... I just need ice cream so bad and like this is the best thing you could do for it maybe that actually would be a bad thing because like you could have struggled with that but in my case I kind of was just curious I'm not like the biggest ice cream eater in the world I think this is good I'm going to try one more bite before I put it away actually quite decent. I'm going to give that um, a solid 9.5 out of 10. Did not know that anything vegan would taste this good. Didn't know a plant-based ice cream could taste good. 
Um, I only give it a 9.5 instead of like a 10 out of 10, just because this is the first one I've ever tried, really. Uh, but I'm just so overwhelmingly surprised. I don't know if I just picked a really good one for my first try or not. I know I hate plant-based meat. I hate it. It's disgusting. Nobody should eat that. If you're eating it, you should feel bad about it. Just kidding. But uh, this is good. Excuse me. I like this. I'm going to put this away. In the meantime, let me play a song for you. Because I got plenty of songs. This next one is called Time Plant.
make it all for your glory. All right. Oop. Pause that. All right. Because <clears throat> there's two more songs left at the playlist that I started. So every playlist is an album. And this next one, the one that I'm making now, that's four tracks now. It's called uh, Lenten Season 2024. It's been good so far. So if you missed the beginning of the stream, I had Psalm 101. My dad heard it, um, actually, and he said it was. I should always just do stuff like that. He said, I don't like your singing, but your reading is good. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> Fair enough, you know. Uh, keep that in mind. But I also have a beer to review. And I got a comment here. Let me take a look. Richard says, peace and respect at burning bushes. Peace to you, Richard. So I'm about to open up one of these bad boys. I've already reviewed the ice cream. It was a plant-based ice cream made with almond milk. And it's actually really good. Um, but we're about to review this Athletic Brewing Company, non-alcoholic, upside dawn golden. I'll tell you more about it. First, let me look at The Reckoning is Coming. Great name. <laughs> uh, Dan, is it true that Jesus starved for 40 days so that you could have Walmart frozen aisle ice cream in a Coors Light? <laughs> well, um, yeah, you, you kind of missed it. I, I use plant-based ice cream, and I'm doing a non-alcoholic beer uh, because it's during Lent. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm fasting still. It's just I'm reviewing something that is fast friendly, and normally you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't think of reviewing these things because like ice cream is a treat, and beers I would consider to be a treat. I mean, I used to be a former alcoholic until God saved my life, um, so <clears throat> I I have respect for that, and uh, what I've noticed today, especially was. Sometimes it can be inspirational for alcoholics to see someone like myself go into a beer store and get a non-alcoholic beer. I had a very long and, and good conversation with somebody today because of that. So I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Um, <clears throat> we're beer lovers at heart, but we also love being at our best. These conflicting passions created an internal struggle. We couldn't have these loves live in harmony. Oh, oh no, no, they're asking, why couldn't we? Why couldn't these loves live in harmony? Yes, there was non-alcoholic beer, but we're lovers of great tasting beer. Maybe it just wasn't possible. But we had to give it a try. A few years and a hundred of recipes later, Athletic Brewing Company was born, the first brewery fully devoted to the production of non-alcoholic craft beer in the United States. We craft our innovative recipes using only pure all-natural ingredients in small batches at our custom state-of-the-art breweries. Our intricate process lets you enjoy the refreshing taste of craft beer without the alcohol. So whether you're decided to cut alcohol out of your life for good, for a night, or just one drink. Athletic Brewing Company provides an option without compromises. Near beer contains less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. If this is 45 calories, 10 grams of carbohydrates, the ingredients are simply water, malted barley, oats, hops, wheat, and yeast. These things are all fast friendly. Uh, but the reckoning is coming. I I I I, I get your your point though. I don't want to make you feel like a jerk because like I'm just like yeah I'm actually really about my faith and you didn't know that. Um, I I understand what you mean because there's something that Saint newly canonized Saint Seraphim Rose said a very um, wonderful soul to walk this earth who is now with Christ. Um, his memory be eternal. He said that it is the struggle of the Christian to fight against the spirit of the age. 
always. And what is the spirit of this age? It might be the worst one yet. The spirit of the Antichrist. Anyway, let's open this up. Oh, I'm getting some great smells here. But Richard has a question. He says, isn't less than 0.5% still mean it does have alcohol at burning bushes? Yeah, probably. It, there's probably a trace amount. <coughs> <coughs> but there's a trace amount of alcohol in a lot of things that are acceptable uh, for medical uses. And uh, I also will be taking communion when it's my time. And I've already taken blessed wine before. Um, it's... I've talked to my doctors about it. It's okay. In fact, they recommend using kombucha sometimes, which is also has some alcohol in it. It's just such a small amount that it's not an issue. It's just if you drank a lot, that would really hurt my liver because liver disease. Cheers. Wow. My goodness, that tastes like a beer. And not only that, a very good beer. Okay, so on the nose, I'm getting some floral, but fruity notes, most more fruity than floral. The hops are not taking over. It's not too bitter. We got a bouquet here of like mango and pineapple and maybe some orange or nectarine. Maybe some peach. Like, you're getting a lot of really nice fruit-like notes. And then, on the taste. The beginning has that razzle of the carbonation. Very well carbonated. And it kind of segues into the razzle of this slight bitter note. But it's not an overwhelming bitter note like a lot of IPAs are. Where it just tastes like you're sucking on a, I don't know. Uh, uh, witch hazel, <laughs> you know, it's, it's taking the moisture out of your mouth. No, this is solidly encapsulated by these fruity tones and some straw, dare I say a hint of honey. And then the finish is quite nice. It has a nice bready finish to it that I love. And the aftertaste here has just a bit of a linger, almost like if you drank an IPA, almost like that, but not so bad. But it does have this sort of lingering aftertaste to it of, of, of bitter note that does have you wanting to drink more of it, just like an IPA would, but not in an abusive, annoying way, like these very high potent hop direct IPAs are like. So this is good. I like this. Excuse me. Richard says, sorry, none of those are ingredients. I told you the ingredients already, Richard. But I'll tell you again. It's really simple. It's just water, malted barley, oats, hops, wheat, and yeast. With those ingredients, you get all these amazing flavors. This is the beauty of craft brewing. Just like there's only a few notes in music. And yet, look what you can do with it. This is what is meant by the sum. Wait, or the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. There we go. <laughs> the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's when things synergize and they complement, sometimes even clash. The interaction between these forces creates new stories. That's what makes it a craft, I think. Well, no, I think that makes it an art. We really should call them artisanal beers. Some guy says, uh, good beer, no alcohol. Yeah. Um, get some cannabis liquid edible squeeze. <laughs> I could. I, I do have 
Well, I don't like to talk about I don't like to talk about my medical stuff, but I do happen to have, you know, uh, a card uh, that was prescribed by my um, gastrologist, actually, uh, because of the liver disease and all that, so that I can use that if you know the need arises in a in a moderate way that is understanding that you don't want to do something just to escape from the struggles of life but balancing that with the medicinal uses <clears throat> so that it's it's um it's an interesting thing uh when when to to be mindful of these what we would i would call an you know herbal medicine some people would call it pharmacia uh so you can also look at this with antidepressants and all these other drugs out there things for um anti-inflammatories basically all medicine kind of falls under this sort of area that i i, I find to be like this sort of soup a spectrum <laughs> where what you need to 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 see uh because it can be complicated is is there an, an obstruction with your connection to God somewhere in there? And be honest with, about that. And if you find that there is no disruption in that connection to God through using a medicine that was prescribed by a doctor, you'll find a lot of spiritual fathers will agree, maybe, minded. Um, so I know I'm good. Uh, but I don't want to speak for other people. So you know, I'll just put up a banner that I do not speak for the church. I speak about my own personal experiences. Please come and see an Eastern Orthodox Church for guidance in spiritual matters. Um, action will be taken. The... <laughs> what is what is up with that screen name man that is almost dare i say impressive that is an impressive screen name <laughs> am i allowed to even read that um i'm going to go ahead and do it all right so the the username here is <clears throat> the Goyslop Effect Maker Free Palestine Trust Fauci 1488 HD. My goodness. There's references there to Nazism, uh, <laughs> anti-vax, uh, Free Palestine. I think it's funny to clump that in there with that. You know, I think you did that intentionally. Um, and then an anti-Semitic type thing. Wow. Wow. That is <laughs> something else, my man. That is something else. Um, Richard says, yep, my memory was accurate. Thanks for confirming that all those notes you mentioned are not there. Thank you. Richard, why are you like this to me? Why are you like this? I'm a reviewer. I tell you what I am feeling, okay? All right. Richard says, possible disruptions to any connection to God. Any misunderstanding about God, any misunderstanding about prayer, any misunderstanding of self and other things. All right, relax, Richard. Okay, you're getting crazy. I can when you raise your voice like that. That's how I know you're getting crazy over there. All right, listen. Let's relax for a second, and, and we we can work this through. There will always be disruptions to our connection to God. That's why we are always asking for mercy, and we're asking for God to to save us. God can do all things. If we were left to our own, which God was so kind as to show us what would happen <laughs> through the Old Testament, you know, if we were to just do this on our own, um, things aren't going to go so well. We're going to get confused sometimes. It really took God coming here and revealing himself to us in our own corrupt flesh. And we still don't get it. But... We're a lot closer now than we were, and we have an inheritance that is, I, we're spoiled rotten. As Christians, we're spoiled rotten. As an Orthodox, I, I 
what was I just given by walking into this church and them accepting me? The inheritance of the truth. <laughs> I did nothing to deserve this. So I'm just grateful. And when I come back from the church, sometimes I'm on fire and I just want to spread it to the world. And something I saw today in the icons, this is just why the icons are so wonderful. I keep loving them more and more when I don't, when I think I can't love an icon more. I mean, they, they saved my life. I got out of hell because of an icon. And yet I still love them more because today I was looking at one. And I noticed it was the dormation of the Theotokos. And Christ is beholding her soul in his arms. And she is a child. How about that for a minute? All the time, this is what we see. This is what I see. It's one of my favorite icons. There's Christ with his mother. Holding our infant king as an infant. How can such things be? But if that wasn't enough, then there's Christ holding her as a child. And then it starts to hit me. She's the first saint, after all. Greatly magnified, precious Theotokos, undefiled thou gave birth to God the Word. Thee do we magnify, <clears throat> but first of the saints, she became a child. We are all to become children, I think. I think that's what we're all supposed to become as children in God's kingdom. And so we should be getting used to being children now while we still have time. When you were a child, you had some innocence that was good. And then it was trampled on by the world. And you become who you are now. You need to Purify yourself of all of that and become clean again, just like a child. All right, let me take a look at the chat here. Relax, not my style, says Richard. Um, Jamal Official says, is Richard the pastor from Outlast? There need be no disruption, says Richard. There doesn't need to be, but there often are. You know, I'm just saying it's not, obviously it's not easy. Richard says, peace and respect, Jamal. And he says, no, I am not the pastor from Outlast. And Real Gaming 9000 says, you look like the homeless man I threw bricks at every morning. Or that you throw bricks at every morning, like you currently still do that. Um, don't throw bricks at homeless people, man. It's messed up. And also, what homeless person looks like me? Are you saying I look like a homeless person? That's like a double whammy, because number one, her and a homeless person is messed up. And we all share in humanity. And that's a messed up thing to do. But number two, I don't look like a homeless person. I don't like you saying that. I feel like that's an insult. <laughs> Real gaming 9000. Are, are you really that good at gaming? That you can give yourself that name? Real gaming 9000? Are you sure you're not more like 899? Richard says, peace and respect, Real Gaming 9000. Clayor15 says, hell yeah. Jamal Official says, use medieval trebuchets to turn homeless people into small red stains. Jamal, what the heck is going on over here? You're coming up with a story that's demented. Uh, the Goy slop effect maker, Free Palestine Trust Fauci, 1488 HD says, so how are you doing? I'm doing okay. <clears throat> I think I might have to start calling you a different person. I'm just going to call you 
free Palestine. I like that part. Throwing bricks at homeless. Uh, ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, uh, sir. Mm-hmm. Tyrese McDowell says this stream is kind of mid. Yeah. Whatever. Claire 15 loves. <laughs> Tyrese McDowell. Peace and respect, Tyrese McDowell, Clay R15, and Hugh DeHoob. Clay R15 says, later, Richard Madsen. Some guy says, teach homeless, help homeless. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I would say that would be appropriate in some cases. But uh, absolutely do not throw bricks at them. That should go... I like Japan's take on homelessness. It takes, it seems to be a good solution. What is Japan's take on homelessness? All right, let's take a look at this real quick. According to official statistics, Japan, a country with over 125 million residents, has around 3,000 homeless people, about 0.003% of its population, which is way less than other countries with low homelessness rates like Switzerland and miles ahead of countries like the US. But why? Exactly. Well, there are several reasons that are often mentioned as the cause of this extremely low rate. So first, being homeless is actually very difficult in Japan. And in the Japanese culture, it is incredibly stigmatized. According to a founder of an... Alright, so... <clears throat> I think I see where that's going. And... Yeah, alright. Well, I don't agree with that. Uh, Richard says, why... Why that is preposterous. When I tried that they all made pretty large stains the homeless are anti-corporations so they're good uh big jim says yo 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 what's going on man tyrese don't say that stuff. See, this is the messed up stuff. So Tyrese is writing this, and I'm not going to say this out loud. And then Jamal says, you will personally be in heaven with Christ, and Orlo will weep. Now, a lot of people don't know, but Orlo was a name that I used to go by on the internet, Orlo Amadeus. And that's, that's a pretty hurtful thing to say, but I guess it would be pretty funny to say, too, if I was in your shoes. Uh, Richard says, peace and respect, Big Jim. Hugh says, no, you won't, sir. You're, you'll burn in the fire. And <laughs> he's laughing. Um, Real Gaming 9000 says, I, I just wish my child would say, certainly, father, I shall fetch another alcoholic beverage so I don't have to hang it to the wall and beat it every Sunday night. Oof. Oof. Hateful, hateful stuff. My goodness, real gaming. What is going on with this chat? This is like poisonous. It's like toxic stuff. Uh, Claire 15 says, basically, if you're homeless, everyone treats you like dirt. They won't give you a penny. When Japan was an imperialist country, giving money to beggars was punishable by death. Well, yeah, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Um, Japan sucks. Only weebs that never left USA like them, says Hugh to Hoob. Yeah, and then Clara 15 says, you probably never left the USA. Kaiju comes up here with this hot take now. She says, Jesus is Dionysus. Just saying. No, he's not. Not even a little bit. You know, you know. Some of you people know that I was a former occultist, and you also maybe know that I studied world religion and that I also have a minor in philosophy. And part of that, somewhere along those lines, Greek mythology was kind of covered. And Dionysus is not Jesus. 
Not even a little bit. People who say that don't know Greek mythology at all. It makes you seem like you don't know what you're talking about. And you can dig in, but they're not the same at all. <laughs> do, do, do you even know what they do during Saturnalia? <laughs> anyway, Tyrese asks, uh, or says this, um, I had the choice between feeding my dog today or buying a six-pack of beer. I think I made the right choice. I hope you fed your dog. My goodness. I don't know if I'm going to have to... Hey, look, guys, I practice my Tekken combos on my infant son so he learns how to be a good beer-getting machine. These, these are awful, awful things to be saying. Uh, Richard says, these, they are trolls. This is the father's way of keeping you sober. Chastisement for having been a troll. Burning Bush's channel. Oh, I don't like that at all, Richard. I don't like that. Hope you're wrong. Jamal says, what if Jesus did meth instead of wine? Um, then, I don't know, man. What if Jesus decided not to die for your sins? I guess you'd basically be uh, sent to hell. You would basically your nature would um, die with the earth. You're, you would glue yourself to the earth and die with it. That's what would happen if Jesus did meth instead of wine. Most likely. But I don't know because these are goofy questions. These goofy questions I shouldn't even be answering. All right, Richard says, peace and respect, Kaiju. What is the culture and story of Dionysus, Kaiju? Okay, ancient Greece, got that much. Zoomer kids don't, didn't get beat enough. Oh my gosh, guys, right, stop talking about beating kids. All right, don't beat children. Don't beat homeless people. Don't beat anybody. Be kind to your neighbors. You're supposed to love others as you would love yourself. Richard says, no person likes chastisement. Try to man up a little, burning bushes. <laughs> um, Tyree says, you're right. I did make the right choice. I bought the beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. My dog just got shipped to China. Is he cooked? Am I cooked? Will he be cooked? Jamal Official says, is the reckoning coming and will action be taken? The cooking is coming, the meal will be consumed. Well, actually, interesting that you said that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and fillest all things, Treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. And upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. 
Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Misere me, misere me, misere me, misere me. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. O Lord our God, if I sinned in anything this day, in word or deed or thought, forgive me all, for you are good and you love mankind. Grant me peaceful and undisturbed sleep and deliver me from the assault and attack of the evil one. Rouse me at the proper time to glorify you, for blessed are you, together with your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, O oh Lord, who deliver us from the arrows of temptation that fly by day, deliver us also from every deed of darkness, except the lifting up of our hands as an evening sacrifice. Grant that we may also pass through the course of the night without blemish untried by evil and deliver us from every trouble and from the fear that comes to us from the devil. Grant penance to our souls and let our minds be concerned with your dread and righteous judgment. Nail down our flesh in fear of you and mortify our earthly body that in the calm of sleep we may be made bright by the contemplation of your judgments. Take from us every unseemly imagination and harmful desire. Raise us up at the time of prayer, strengthened in faith and advancing in your commandments through the good pleasure and goodness of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed together with your all-holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy and according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my offense. Wash me thoroughly of my inequity and cleanse me of my sin, for I know my inequity and my sin is ever before me. Against you alone have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. For lo, in inequity I was conceived, and in sins my mother bore me. For lo, you have loved truth, the secret in hidden lore of your wisdom have you revealed to me. You will sprinkle me with hyssop and I shall be cleansed. You will wash me and I shall be made whiter than snow. You will make me hear of joy and gladness. The bones which have been humbled will rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and with your sovereign spirit establish me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn to you again. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue will rejoice at your justice. Lord, you will open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You will not take pleasure in burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. A broken and a humbled heart God will not despise. Do good to Zion, O Lord, in your good pleasure. And let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you will be well pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness. With oblations and burnt offerings, then they will offer calves upon your altar. O God, come to my aid, O Lord, hasten to help me. Let those who seek my soul be shamed and confounded. Let those who wish me evil be turned back and disgraced. May those who say to me, well done, well done, turn away immediately in shame. Let all who seek you O oh God, be glad and rejoice in you. Let all who love your salvation ever say, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Help me, O oh God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, do not delay. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, heed my supplication in your truth, hear me in your righteousness, enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no man living be justified, for the enemy has persecuted my soul, he has lowered my life to the earth, he has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead, my spirit grew despondent within me, and my heart within me was troubled, I remembered the days of old, I meditated on all your works, I considered the works of your hands, I stretched out my hands towards you, my soul thirsted for you, like a waterless land. Be quick to hear me, O Lord, my spirit has failed. Turn not your face from me, lest I be like those that go down into the pit. Make me hear of your mercy in the morning, for in you have I placed my hope. Make me, make known to me the way I should go, for to you have I lifted up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, to you have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your good spirit will guide me in a righteous land. For the sake of your name, O Lord, will you quicken me? In your righteousness will you bring my soul out of affliction. In your mercy will you slay my enemies, and you will destroy all those that afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill among men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, King, God of heaven, Father Almighty, only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You, who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. O you, who sit at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, you alone are Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every evening will I bless you, and praise your name forever, and to the ages of ages. You have been our refuge, O Lord, from generation to generation. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for against you have I sinned. To you have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do your will, 
for you are my God, for with you is the source of life, and in your light shall we see light. May your mercy remain upon those who know you. Lord, grant that this night we may be kept without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name forevermore. Amen. May your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, for in you have we put our trust. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, blessed are you, O Master, make me understand your statutes. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your statutes. Lord, your mercy endures forever. Despise not the works of your hands. To you is due praise. To you is due song. To you is due glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father, before all ages. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets and one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the age to come. Amen. At every time, and at every hour, in heaven and on earth, you are worshipped and glorified, O Christ our God. You who are long-suffering, most merciful, most compassionate, who love the just, and are merciful to sinners, who call all to salvation through the promise of the good things to come. Accept, O Lord, our entreaties at this hour, and guide our lives that we may keep your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our ideas, and deliver us from all distress, evil, and pain. Surround us with your holy angels that, protected and guided by their host, we may attain unity of faith and the knowledge of your unapproachable glory. For blessed are you forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Because of you, who are full of grace, all creation rejoices, the ranks of angels and the human race. O hallowed temple, spiritual paradise and pride of virgins, from you, God took flesh, and he who is our God before eternity, became a little child, for he made your womb his throne and caused it to become wider than the heavens. Because of you, who are full of grace, all creation rejoices. Glory to you, Theotokos. Pray to God for me, O holy prophet Daniel, well-pleasing to God, for I turn to you, who are my swift helper and the intercessor for my soul. O angel of Christ, holy guardian and protector of my soul and body, forgive me everything wherein I have offended you every day of my life, and protect me from all influence and temptation of the evil one. May I never more anger God by any sin. Pray for me to the Lord, that he may make me worthy of the grace of the all-holy trinity, of the most holy mother of God, and of all the saints. Remit, pardon, and forgive, O God, our offenses, both voluntary and involuntary, in deed and in word, in knowledge and in ignorance, by day and by night, in mind and thought, forgive us all things, for you are good and you love mankind. O Lord God and Master, Father, Almighty, Only Begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, one Godhead, one power, have mercy on me, a sinner, and by the judgments which you know me, save me your unworthy servant, for blessed are you forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Master of my life, give me not a spirit of sloth, idle curiosity, love of power, and useless chatter. 
Rather, accord to me, your servant, a spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love. Yes, Lord and King, grant that I may see my own faults and not condemn my brother. For blessed are you forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, lover of mankind, forgive those who hate us. Forgive those who wrong us. Do good to those who do good. Grant our brethren and kindred their requests that lead to salvation and everlasting life. Visit the sick. Grant them healing. Guide those at sea. Journey with those who travel. Help Orthodox Christians to struggle. To those who serve and are kind to us, grant remission of sins. On your servants, Jamal Official, Real Gaming 9000, Hugh DeHoob, Tyrese McDowell, Big Jim, Richard Madsen, the one guy who I don't see, thankfully, so I don't, I'm not going to read his name, but all the people watching the stream right now. And on those who have charged us the unworthy to pray for them, have mercy according to your great mercy. Remember, O Lord, your servants, Joseph Bowles. Our fathers and brethren departed before us, and grant them rest where the light of your countenance shines. Remember, O Lord, our brethren in captivity, and deliver them from every misfortune. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings and do good works in your holy churches, and grant them their requests that lead to salvation and everlasting life. Lord, remember also us, your lowly, sinful, and unworthy servants, and guide us in the way of your commandments through the intercessions of our most pure lady, the mother of God, and ever Virgin Mary, and of all your saints, who have been well-pleasing to you throughout the ages. For it is your will to save us, Lord, and blessed are you forever and ever. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Uh, for people who are about to go to sleep, O oh Lord who fashioned me, you know well that my invisible enemies do not sleep. And you know the weakness of my miserable flesh. And so into your hands I commend my spirit. Shelter me with the wings of your goodness, that I may not sleep unto death. And lighten the eyes of my mind with the delight of your divine words. And rouse me at the proper time to give you glory, for you alone are good and you love mankind. I shall be sheltered under the shadow of your wings, and I shall sleep, for you alone, O Lord, have made me dwell in hope. Into your hands, O Lord, I entrust my soul and body. Bless me and have mercy on me and grant me the grace of eternal life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. All right. What do we got here in, um, in the comments? Wow, there is so many comments. Okay, here we go. See no bites in chat. Have you heard of the great? Pirate? No, I haven't. Okay. Some of these I'm just going to look at and kind of like flash on the screen for other people to see, for re-watchers. And Richard's calling out Kaiju in a way. He just doesn't realize it yet. Or maybe he does. I don't know. See, I'm presumptuous. What? Who do I get off being like, well, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Richard, if you look at the mythology of Dionysus, he's not Christ. They're not the same. 
Dionysus was, you know, the god of wine and intoxication. God took wine and, and it doesn't matter. Right now, it, I'm just going to get through these comments. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 50 year trolls here. Yeah. Oh yeah. What is this IP2? IP2 is here. You guys are still a thing. The outer gods have blah 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 blah. Course is sneaky strong. You. It's true. But be, be strong, boy, man, brother. Uh, Richard says, yep, that sells it. You actually have no children or you'd be more mature, Real Gaming 9000. Yeah, with a name like Real Gaming 9000. I... Yeah, Banquet's 5%, but it hits harder. Yeah, One standard drink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if these guys are IP2 or not. <sighs> My gosh, you guys are like... I'm not reading all these. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, guys, look. I know you're upset about the prayers. But really, I'm doing you a favor. These prayers are healing. This is medicine. This is good for you. And I got a little bit more medicine for you because check out this latest new song. Powder blast, right? 
riding on heated air enlarged Tract of senses unfurnished Belt of grace unfurled Sweep the dust on the lamp We are still shaking from Christ's success Victoria est aeterna Victoria est aeterna Victoria is est aeterna Conflicts wane at the approach Poverty Professionalized Didn't you hear? It's time to rise It's time to rise Company prize Compromise between parties Come prize a cannon at sunrise It's time to hear the powder blast Riding on heated air Sweeping the dust on the lamp We are still shaking from Christ's success. All right. We'll we'll save that last one there for like near the end of the stream here. So I'm glad that some of you guys like that. Excellent. There's... All that is free, and it just keeps on coming. I mean, that album that's four tracks now is, I've made it, started it yesterday. So I just kind of got this whole music thing going. Some people might find it interesting. I don't know. I don't know who Kendrick Lamar is, but thank you. I think. This is something. Oh, Hugh says I'd legit bump that one. Nice. Yeah, I've been I've been making stuff that's more. Been doing more loops and stuff because I I know that's what people seem to like more than my experimental stuff. And I'm gonna kind of run with that a little bit for a while. Till I can get away with doing experimental stuff again. But before you go on the internet, this is the prayer that you should all be praying. Be the helper of my soul, O God, for I walk in the midst of many snares. Deliver me from them and save me, for you are good and you love mankind. I'm sure a lot of people today know about the earthquake, or two now. I haven't checked recently, maybe there's now three. But earthquake in the Northeast. Very unusual to happen. I think it's been about 300 years since something like that happened on that uh, Rambo. I think it's called the Rambo something line. I'm going to take a look. <coughs> I don't think it's called the Rambo line because that would be too funny. No, it's called the Ramapo Fault. The Ramapo Fault line. And it runs along here. That's where we've been getting the earthquakes so far. Interesting. This was not another big one. 6.8 that happened in the Pacific Ocean. did say I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more earthquakes and by a little bit I mean a lot and it's just going to keep ramping up and there's a perfectly good scientific reason for this but there is no scientific explanation for how the Bible predicted it it's like we were only meant to know right before it happened This stuff is amazing. What has been uncovered now, and there's, there's a, actually, let me just play you guys a video real quick because he does a better job. It. I, I just like to rely on suspicious observers because I'm just going to mess it up if I talk about it. 
Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, I want to show you guys this real quick. It's just a three minute video. Good afternoon, folks. This morning's top story was a big one. The confirmation mathematically that we are in the geomagnetic reversal, the magnetic pole shift. I'll presume you have all done the homework and if not, pause this and watch the video in the description box found below. So this is one of the top geophysical guys in Russia and his work is extremely complex. He has a serious understanding of not only geophysics, but math and his identification of real world magnetic anomalies dance with his physics model of the earth and tell us we are in the disaster cycle zenith right now. Some of the critical takeaways from the article are that, again, we are in the major planetary magnetic shift we have been discussing for years. The key magnetic anomalies that confirmed his initial hypothesis were in 2007, 2020, and last year in 2023. His model has a much broader runway in terms of a time frame just due to the nature of the model itself, saying it will occur before 2216 AD. We'll dig a bit deeper into that in a moment. And he confirmed the approximately 6,000 year cycle for these events. I am not sure how much more an observer could hope to see in a single publication. Now, the main difference between his and our coverage is the timeline, but his thermohydrogravidynamic model is just not the same kind of analysis as our mathematical extrapolation. It can't be as specific with the timing, just like my analysis can see the pattern and do the math, but can't nail down the physical processes within the Earth responsible for that pattern. Here is our chart from our latest book, showing where the magnetic field strength has been and how the decline in strength has accelerated just as the speed of the magnetic pole movement has increased. The critical area is actually where we are right now, the inflection point, where the curve takes over and the decline begins to accelerate rapidly. This comports with the finding of the major magnetic anomaly in 2023, which also correlates with what we've covered in real time, the auroral records last year, and the unexpectedly high KP index events over the last year as well. The magnetic anomaly identified in his paper is part of the main reason for them. We have hit another acceleration node in the timeline. And that also agrees well with what we are expecting to come in the following years. The shift begins slowly, but when it kicks into gear, remember, it will eventually be going a hundred times faster than the changes we saw in the first years of this new millennium. This is what you saw with the chart taking a dive. We're on the cliff's edge right now. Now this is why our model may be less impressive in, well, almost every way, but it takes the upper hand in giving the timeline, which I would argue is pretty darn important. We should have the zenith of the disaster in the 2030s or 2040s, but of course, Remember that major calamities are expected before that. Volcanoes, earthquakes, solar storm, grid down scenarios, not to mention the stupidity of the idiots running this planet. I hope this video was informative. Thank you for watching. Please do that homework if you haven't yet. I will see you in the morning for the daily show. That's just a little bit of uh, some of the science that is coming out about our current excursion event. So ever since the Carrington event in 1859 or whatever, um, our magnetosphere has been decreasing in strength. And it's only accelerating at an exponential rate. This is what you call in a graph like a singularity type thing, but either way, <laughs> everything is coming to a head. Uh, so I guess the science by it now, if I understand it at all, which I'm not claiming I do, is the center of our Milky Way, the black hole, it's a giant magnetic thing. This is a giant magnetic torus, okay? Like with field lines and all that. And this wavelength, is so incredibly long that it's actually at 12,000 years. It's 12,000 year light years, the wavelength. So this always will happen at these intervals. 
But, you know, we're just now starting to see that it's actually coming to fruition. People talked about this kind of stuff before. I think the first book that came out about it, um, when they started first looking at paleomagnetism, and that, you know, we do have magnetic poles, and, you know, they have shifted before, and how often do they shift? And starting to read in the sediment, um, there were a few people that said that it seemed like the Earth may be tilted in its past. And it's possible that's something that could happen. That's still unknown. But because the, the poles are shifting out from where they're supposed to be, if they were to be reoriented suddenly, I mean, that would cause a crazy calamity. I'm not saying that's going to happen. A lot, some people are. I'm not saying that. No. But either way, solar activity is becoming more and more and more relevant. I've been on this thing. I've been on this kick since like at least 2010 when I was back in college. Wrote wrote papers about it that actually got an award um, when I was I was talking about the magnetosphere and how it's important. <laughs> this is going to be relevant, and I just I had no idea it would be like a disaster like thing, but it is. So there you go, a little a little something to to sink your teeth into, if you're ever into trying to figure out why the world is doing some of these strange things. Now, other things aren't going to be related to this. The, what's really happening is on a spiritual level. But there are physical processes that happen at the same time. Because there isn't, no, there isn't like the separation between spirit and material. You know, it was always meant, at least for humans, for us to have it both here. You know? We, we do. We, we, we show our faith through our actions. We show who we are by what we do and how we spent our time here. That's how we write our lives, is through our deeds and the people that we love. And in a lot of ways, what is our hearts focused on? It's not about our ideas or our feelings, or what you look like, or what your name is. The soul is deeper. And love is the key. That is the fruit of eternity. All right, so people are claiming that I'm yapping in the chat. Which is this new, this new term that you kids are coming up with these days. Yapping. You're recycling old words. And yapping is not a good one. You guys need better linguo people. Linguo people. In your, in your lexicon generators. Who, who's, making, who's making words cool in your generation? Yapping? How about something cooler like stop all the useless chatter. Knock it off, you knucklehead. Try that one on. Their dad and moms live in <laughs> separate homes. Aww. All right, Tyrese. Says I am too smart to believe in a god. He's too smart for it. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll dive into this as we go. Uh you say you're too smart to believe in a god. Do you think that intelligence has anything to do with it? It might. 
Maybe, maybe if you're just super big brain like yourself, you know, you just, you wouldn't be able to believe in God because you'd be so big brained. It'd be slowing you down in some ways. I don't know if you could walk upright. You'd have so much weight in your head. You'd be like toppling over. But I spend my evenings watching Rick and Morty. Okay, Rick and Morty's a good show, I guess. It's going to get worse. Uh, and wearing my video games are calling and I must go shirt while munching down on Doritos. Yeah, well, I, I, it sounds like you're making fun of yourself right now. And I like it. I like that self-deprecation. Yeah, Rick and Morty is the ultimate form of science. Yeah, see, I, I get it, Tyrese. You're making fun of yourself right now. I'm a qualified scientist based off my Rick and Morty episodes I've watched. There we go. So, making it abundantly clear. Yeah. Tyrese. All right, check this out, Tyrese. I want you to hear this. Listen to some real music. Reveal the mystery 
of your goal. I have learned to love your truth. It has nourished my broken soul. Let it soothe me now like oil. Spirit of truth, reveal thyself to me. King of my heart, Christ God, safeguard me. Allow no demon to deceive me. Let no fanciful delusions tempt me. Destroy all inequity within me. Make me pure to see you, lest I shoulder this hunger forever. Spirit of truth, reveal thyself to me. King of my heart, Christ God, safeguard me. Destroy all inequity within me. Amen. So, so, Hugh, I, I do want to say I appreciate you. You're like, you're like battling all these trolls in the chat single-handedly. And you have a wrench. Like at any point you could just smite these people, but you're doing you're you're like you're just you're you're doing a good job being a good number one fan. I mean, Hugh's been part of Burning Bushes before it was Burning Bushes. <laughs> I mean, he was there when it was called I think probably back when it was called Daniel J. Newman, actually. And then it became Orlo Books, or no, not Orlo Books, it became Orlo Amadeus in the pandemic pub. And then, you know, now it's burning bushes, but Hugh's been around since I was reviewing beers back in the good old days. You guys are new. You guys just like just now know who a little bit about me and you're just getting curious about me, you know, which is great. But I just want to give a shout out to Hugh out there holding down the court. All right, we're going to go ahead and read something interesting. You guys are really going to love this one. Oh, Lord Almighty. <clears throat> Actually. Oh, Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of their righteous seed, who made heaven and earth with all their array, who fastened the sea by the word of your command, who shut up the deep and sealed it with your fearsome and glorious name, before whom all things shudder and tremble in the presence of your power, for unbearable it is your glory. And not to be withstood is your anger of your threat towards sinners. And the mercy of your promise is measureless and unsearchable. For you are the Lord Most High, compassionate, long-suffering, and abundant in mercy. And you repent towards the evil deeds of men. O Lord, according to the greatness of your goodness, have you appointed repentance and forgiveness to those who have sinned against you. And in the greatness of your compassion, have you decreed repentance unto salvation for sinners. Therefore, O Lord God of powers, you did not appoint repentance for the righteous, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who did not sin against you. But you have appointed repentance for me, a sinner. For I have sinned more than the measure of sand in the sea. For my inequities have been multiplied, O Lord. My inequities have been multiplied. And I'm not worthy to raise my eyes and to behold the height of heaven. Because of the multitude of my unrighteous deeds, I am bowed down by a heavy iron fetter so that I cannot lift my head, and there is no relief for me, for I have provoked your wrath 
and done what is evil in your sight, I have not done your will, nor kept your commandments. And now I bend the knee of my heart, begging for your clemency. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my inequities. I am asking, begging you, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me. Destroy me not in my transgressions. Be not angry with me forever, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show all goodness. For though I am unworthy, you will save me according to your great mercy. And I will praise you all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. And glory is yours forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I heard somebody at my door. So I'm going to check something real quick. Let me play something for you all. Let's go with... Let's go with Blueberry Space Cake. You guys will like this. You'll love it. You'll be in love. Let's crank it up. You spoke about winter. You joked about croaking reindeer. You took Santa Claus literally. Now, blueberry cakes ascend into space. Murphy's Law Enforcement on patrol Insufficient funds without a doubt Dead racers Blackout Centrifugal force has legs. Your Wednesday is in disarray. Because the early morning shadows. From outside, you spoke about winter. You joked about croaking reindeer. You took Santa Claus literally Now blueberry cakes ascend into space Murphy's law enforcement on patrol Insufficient funds without a doubt Death racers black out Centrifugal force has legs your Wednesday is in disarray Because the early morning shadows from the outside of curtains divide Bands from the sun stun, lands from the book undone The Ancient of Days has a plan His eyes glowed and fire from his mouth All Justice scaled on the snakeskin All justice scaled on the snakeskin All justice scaled on the snakeskin All justice fulfilled by forgiving there's just one man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's just one man. Run no way, run no way, run no way.
didn't you hear me? I told you to run away from this terror demon. Go to the house of the Lord. Orbital blueberry cakes, notwithstanding, you spoke about winter. You joked about croaking reindeer. You took Santa Claus literally. Now blueberry cakes ascend into space. Murphy's Law Enforcement on patrol. Insufficient funds, without a doubt. Debt racers blackout. Centrifugal force has legs. Lands from the book undone. The ancient of days has a plan. His eyes glowed and fire from his mouth. All just as scaled on the snake skin. All just as fulfilled by forgiving. There's just one man. Let's go. Run away from this terror demon. Go. go to the house of the Lord. Rock on. He says, Adult Swim fired high. That sucks. I know. Yeah, when they fired Sam High, that's right. Yeah, Adult Swim used to be good. By the way, thanks for the compliment that this should be on Adult Swim. Rock on. Yeah, old school Adult Swim when they used to do bumps. I always actually wanted to do one of those bumps. I've always had a secret desire somewhere here to make one of those bumps. And then I realized one day, there's nothing stopping me. I can make as many bumps as I want. I can bump it up. That's some hashtag trash folk. So this is my favorite prayer, and I want you all to hear it. It's an act These are extracts from Prayers by the Lake by St. Nikolai Vilmirovic. There's a lot of wisdom. Anoint my heart with the oil of your mercy, my most merciful Lord. May neither anger against the strong, nor contempt for the weak, ever erupt in my heart, for all things are frailer than the morning dew. May hatred never make a nest in my heart against those who plot evil against me, so that I may be mindful of their end and be at peace. Mercifulness opens the way to the heart of all creatures and brings joy. Mercilessness brings fog to the fore and creates a confined isolation. Have mercy on your merciful servant, O most tender hand, and reveal to me the mystery of your mercy. O oh, my love, would that I could motivate all the inhabitants of the earth, waters, and sky to sing a hymn to you. Would that I could remove leprosy from the face of the earth and turn this wanton world back into the sort of virgin that you created. Truly, my God, you are just as great with or without the world. You're equally great whether the world glorifies you or whether the world blasphemes you. But when the world blasphemes you, you seem even greater in the eyes of your saints. O oh Lord, my dream, day and night, help me to magnify you, so that nothing may become great in my heart except you. Let all creatures magnify you, O oh Lord, lest they make themselves great instead of you. Truly, you are exceedingly great, O oh Lord. Would that all our hymns could make you greater. Lord, O oh Lord, do not scorch us with your radiance, which is unbearable for our eyes, and do not leave us in the gloom where, the one, where one grows old and decays. You alone know the measure of our needs, O oh Lord. Glory to you. O oh my Lord, make haste to show a new way to every penitent after he scorns his old way. O oh Heavenly Mother, Bride of the All-Holy Spirit, bow down toward our heart when we repent. Open the fountain of tears within us that we may wash away the heavy clay that saddens our eyes. Open the fountain of tears within us that we may wash away the heavy clay that saddens our eyes. O Holy Spirit, blow away and disperse the unclean stench from the soul of the penitent that has been choking him and lead him to repentance. We bow down and beseech you, O life-giving and mighty spirit. 
For all the sins of men I repent before you, O most merciful Lord. Indeed, the seed of all sins flows in my blood. With my effort in your mercy, I choke this wicked crop of weeds day and night, so that no tar may sprout in the field of the Lord, but only pure wheat. I repent for all those who are worried, who stagger under a burden of anxieties and do not know that they should cast all their troubles on you. For feeble man, even the most minor worry is unbearable. But for you, a mountain of worries is like a snowball thrown into a fiery furnace. I repent for all the sick. For sickness is the fruit of sin. When the soul is cleansed with repentance, sickness disappears with sin, and you, my eternal health, take up your abode in the soul. I repent for unbelievers who through their unbelief amass worries and sickness, both on themselves and on their friends. I repent for all those who blaspheme God, who blaspheme against you without knowing that they were blaspheming against the Master, who clothes them and feeds them, I repent for all the slayers of men who take the life of another to preserve their own. Forgive them, most merciful Lord, for they know not what they do. For they do not know that there are not two lives in the universe, but one. That there are not two men in the universe, but one. Oh, how dead are those who cut their heart in half. I repent for all those who bear false witness, who for in reality they are homicides and suicides. For all my brothers who are thieves and who are hoarders of unneeded wealth, I weep and sigh, for they have buried their soul and have nothing which with to go forth before you. For all the arrogant and the boastful I weep and sigh, for before you they are like beggars with empty pockets. For all drunkards and gluttons, I weep and sigh, for they have become servants of their servants. For all adulterers, I repent, for they have betrayed the trust of the Holy Spirit, who chose them to form new life through them. Instead, they turned serving life into destroying life. For all gossipers I repent, for they have turned your most precious gift, the gift of speech, into cheap sand. For all those who destroy their neighbor's hearth and home and their neighbor's peace, I repent and sigh, for they bring a curse on themselves and their people for all lying tongues, for all suspicious eyes, for all raging hearts, for all insatiable stomachs, for all darkened minds, for all ill will, for all unseemly thoughts, for all murderous emotions. I repent, weep, and I sigh. For all the history of mankind, from Adam to me, a sinner, I repent. For all history is in my blood, for I am in Adam, and Adam is in me. For all the worlds, large and small, that do not tremble before your awesome presence, I weep and cry out, O Master most merciful, have mercy on me and save me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. All right. So I see a lot of people complaining in the chat about the stream, but you don't have to be here. <laughs> you choose to be here. And I'm telling you why you're choosing to be here, because you're confused about it. You think you're here to have a fun time. You're not here to have a fun time. You're here to learn. 
about your Lord and Savior. And that means you're going to have to think you're going to have a good time. And I'm going to have to try to foster that fantasy that you have, that this is a good time for you. For as long as I can, so that I can get this medicine down into your ears. You are lost. The light of the Trinity is the only path. Your soul is immortal. And you're gonna die. Do you get that? <laughs> you're gonna be spending a lot more time than you think. And there's another thing. This life that everybody is wrapped up into, this world of distractions, you know it's not fulfilling you because you came to a stream of a man praying orthodox prayers to troll him. You were unfulfilled and yearning. And I'm not mad about that. Because God loves mankind. He died for my salvation and yours. There's no love. That love, there can be no love greater. There, that love cannot be understood. It is, it is beyond measure. Okay, the word beyond measure is in self is insufficient. This is why there's so much music. God loves mankind. There is a purpose for you. And it's a lot more than what you're doing right now. Finally, God loves mankind. So I encourage you to go and see an Eastern Orthodox Church. Trust me on that one. If anything else, trust me on that. Adios! See ya! Wait, yeah, there we go. I, I had to get the balloons going. I love these balloons. I can't get enough of them. Have a great